It's finally here, Tim. Here we are. It is a new show, and uh, listen, I am super, super excited, and I know there are a bunch of people that are starting to jump onto the stream and nofilter.net, so I want to welcome everybody to our new podcast. It is called Snipes and Stripes. My co-host and very good friend, Tim Peel, the beautiful man right there, looking <laughs> right at you, even though we had many, many battles on the ice, we yelled at each other, we screamed at each other, and we might do it again on this show right now. And just so if you don't know why snipes and stripes, because in hockey, when you score goals, it's called a snipe, which I did many, many times. And this beautiful gentleman had the stripes and we uh, we dominated in each of our positions. And, and now we get to talk about the National Hockey League and everybody that's joining right now, uh, welcome to Snipes and Stripes on nofilter.net. We hope that we bring you so much entertainment. We hope we bring you so much information and we want you guys to join and come along and, and, and give your input. You will see on, the, on your screen, there is a chat bar. You'll be able to type in questions for us. We'll be able to see what you guys are talking about in the chat bar. Also, you have a knock button. In order to come on, you're gonna press that knock button. You will have to log in with your email so we know who you are. And then we'll have the opportunity to bring you right onto the show and join the show with myself and Mr. Tim Peel here. So let me just be the first guy to introduce Tim Peel to nofilter.net, buddy, welcome. Uh, we've been talking about this for a long time. Uh, it is finally here, it's a new season, it's a new podcast, and I couldn't be more excited to have one of the best partners in all of, all of hockey than yourself. Ah, uh, thanks, buddy, I really appreciate it. You know, when, uh, when the last two and a half years, uh, we've talked about it probably for the last year, and, and I remember, I want the viewers to, to know this, that you know, I'm, I was looking at some videos the other day. I was showing my son Bronson, who was 11 years old, some videos of you and you played. And I go, he played tough. He was skilled. He had heart. He had personality. And I'm showing him all these videos. So people know that about you and your outgoing personality and your persona and so on. But I want to also pe people to understand the other side of you that you maybe don't don't want people to know. And that's the heart that you have. And when I got released by the National Hockey League two and a half years ago, that was a rough day. It was March 24th and uh, I had to come home and tell my kids they weren't going to see their dad work their last NHL game and it sucked. It was a bad day. And one of the first calls that I had that day was from this guy here, number 27, Jeremy Roenick. And he said, Peelzy, I know you feel like you're in quicksand right now, that life is over. It sucks. And, but he says, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to get through this and and something good will come out of this down the road so uh, i want to thank you for for that uh because it, it meant a lot to me at the time especially coming from somebody like yourself yeah it's pretty awesome i i, I mean i remember that day uh extremely um ex it's an extremely graphic visual for me because i know what it's like to be disrespected i know what it's like to be shit on uh, i know what it's like to be un unfairly ruled and unfairly um critiqued uh, the National Hockey League let you down. There's no question about it. Uh, they 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 didn't show you any loyalty in in what you gave to the league. Um, your 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 awesome uh, way that style that you brought to the ice. Um, and you know it seems it seems that that's sports these days. There's there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of a lot of non loyalty, and it's unfortunate. And they did it to you. Uh, yep. It's unfortunate that you. It, it's unfortunate that you didn't get the chance to to play in your last game, and I say play ref, but it is a game to you, and that you weren't able to go out the way that you wanted to with your family at the arena. Uh, I thought it was awful that the, that you didn't have the opportunity to stand in line and shake the players' hands and let the players uh, tell you how much they appreciated your service to the game and what you gave to the game. Uh, that is something I think that all you referees, and you can give your opinion on that. I think that means a lot to you of what the players think. And when you're playing in your last game, and we've seen it many, many times on referees that have left the game, to sit there and have that that gracious and that real humbling feeling uh, and proud feeling to have the players that you are on the ice with, that you go head to head with, you clash, you yell at, you scream at, you call names and that they sit there and, and they shake your hand and say congratulations. And, and the National Hockey League took that away from you and, and yeah. shame on them for doing that. Well, I appreciate it, but uh, you know, we all have to be, I guess, accountable for our actions. And 
I wish it, it obviously the outcome had become, had have been different, but a lot of good came out of it. And uh, it's funny you mentioned shaking the players' hands and so on. There, there were the people that reached out the day that I was released was was unbelievable. And there was one player in particular, David Clarkson, and you may remember David played for New Jersey, played for Toronto, played a good hard game, and but he hated referees. And I've told the story before, so but he hated referees. And him and I, every time we saw each other, it was fuck you this and fuck you that. It was just, it was relentless. And and so I get a call from a Columbus number as I'm driving home from the airport. And I'm like, oh God, who's this? So I pick it up and he goes, hey, Tim, it's David Clarkson. And I go, and for a split second, JR, I go, oh shit, he's going to tell me he's happy. You know, <laughs> it looks fucking good on you. I'm happy. And he goes, I got your, Mar- your number from Marty Berdur. I just want to let you know when I saw your name on the board in the in the dressing room, I knew I had one of the best refs, but I knew I had one of the fairest refs. And I just want to let you know I'm sorry for what happened. And so it was those kind of calls that you got from people that you didn't even think liked you. But Bill McCreary, longtime referee who you, you know, you would have had him a long time. He did all yeah. the big games. He always yeah. said, to me, he goes, Peelzy, you never want to be really liked in this business. You just want to be respected. So. Listen, we'll talk about we'll talk about my story and okay, another. We'll, we'll have a lot of time. We got a lot, we'll a lot of time to hear. We got. I, I, think yep. what's, I, I think what's great about this podcast is we're going to get two different perspectives. We're going to get the player perspective on what we feel about the players and what's going on. Some going to be bad. Some going to be good. There's going to be obviously a lot of critiquing going on, but we're also going to praise a lot of things that are going on. And to have somebody like you that saw it from a different angle, you know, there's how many times have we seen in. in in games where the referee screws up a fucking play and we're like, what are you doing? I know. What's happening? Why? Like, how did you miss that? Or what are you thinking? Or, you know, the three blind mice. And now we get the kind of, now we get the, the, the see and hear from your perspective of, of what's going through their mind. So I think sure. that I think the fans that turn in to watch this, watch our podcast to watch Snipes and Stripes, by the way, which is, which is sponsored by whiskey in the wild. My, my whiskey that uh, I love so much, I'll have it every show. So feel free to uh, go on Whiskey in the Wild and grab a bottle and share it uh, with me for all of our shows. It's yeah, you, you were you were pretty good with the refs, but I do remember one time in Philadelphia, you got filleted open twice, not once, but twice, and your lip was filleted open. Times. Was it Three the third time? Right? And that poor Blaine Angus didn't call any of them when you whipped the water bottle across the ice. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, for all those who don't remember that, uh, it's it is legendary. There's actually a picture that if you go on Google and you Google uh, Jeremy Roenick, you go through all the videos, all the pictures, you'll see a picture of my face. Absolutely, what you talked about filleted, and that's exactly yeah. right. I had cuts on my mouth. I had cuts on my eye. I literally got high <laughs> high stuck in the same place. And took about 30 stitches three different times. So 10 stitches the first period, 10 stitches the second period. Third period, I'm going down the left hand side, I'm busting to the net, and all of a sudden the stick comes up, misses my stick, hits me in the mouth in the same place, splices right open, and I am looking straight at Blaine Angus as I'm coming around the net. He is looking right at me. <laughs> Feels that he is looking right at me and sees my face just blow up, and he does nothing, almost a little <laughs> spurk. And I, with a little smirk and I skated by him and I, I spit the biggest glob of blood at his, at his skates, <laughs> told him to fuck off. And he teed me right up. He's like, you're out of here. And I got to the bench and I was so irate. The first thing, the only thing that I could have done is I picked up that water bottle from the bench as he was giving me a misconduct over at the penalty box. And I hucked that thing. <laughs> I mean, I, I I mean, I looked like Bo Jackson throwing an outfield ball. Yeah. yeah no, it was right on. Yeah. It was a good throw. It was a good throw. It was a one bouncer, right hit Blaine, and you know I was out of the game and well, end up costing me about nine. End up costing me about ninety thousand dollars or two game suspension. But I, I'll say it all the time. It was worth well, it. Well, you know what, buddy, you're so beautiful. It's hard to tell you have you've had any stitches or bro, or two or three broken jaws or any. You got a you got a good plastic <laughs> surgeon, so. I'm I'm surviving. I'm surviving. But uh, so let's, let, hey, let's let's jump right into it. it's a new season, right? We we love new seasons. Everybody's optimistic. Awesome. Everybody has everybody has a chance to win the Stanley Cup, right? Every, even Toronto Maple Leafs, they have a chance to win the Stanley Cup this year, which um, which we know they have probably the most pressure of anybody. But if if you're going into the new season, um, who 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 has the most pressure right now uh, in the beginning of the season to have a good season? 
and the most pressure to succeed and, and finally get to that to that uh, you know that championship game. There's a couple. There's a couple teams. You know, I think Boston obviously has pressure on them. But then you say Boston's they. Boston's gonna suck this year, man. I, I know. You Boston say, has pressure. But, but Jim Jim Montgomery Jim Montgomery's gonna a, suck. Jim Montgomery's gonna suck. a great Jim Montgomery. They're not gonna suck. They still have a good they're team. They got, they got a great D. You, I guarantee you, they'll make the playoffs. I'm telling you right now. But you're I don't think you're gonna get. You're gonna guarantee that already. I'll guarantee you that Boston will make the playoffs. Yeah, but. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to question that one. I, I think okay. they're going to be a bub, They're going to be a bubble team. They're going to struggle to, to make the playoffs. They might make it, but it's not going to be, it's not going to be easy. Yeah. No, I didn't say it was going to be easy, but I think the biggest pressure, I don't think you there's just pressure. guaranteed it. No, no, no. You but I don't, it. but I don't think there's, so as far as teams that are under pressure, I don't think Vegas has got any pressure. They pretty much have the same team that they had last year. They've got a phenomenal team. I think the pressure is on a team like Toronto. Uh, they 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 have a new general manager in Brad Treleving, which is he's a tremendous person. I think he'll do a great job there. Um, but they, you know, they I I'll give uh, Treleving a lot of credit. He brought in Bertuzzi, brought in Domi, he brought in Reeves last year during the playoffs. I grew up a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. I've got pictures. I've posted pictures on Twitter of me and my Toronto Maple Leaf pajamas and so on as a kid i love the toronto maple leafs but i i made some comments last year about the leaf fans and I, you would have thought that i was a mass murderer or whatever like it was unbelievable they just the hatred to this fan base is so arrogant and cocky they expect their team to be to be the best every year but i i truly believe those three guys are going to give that team an identity that they didn't have and and i said this about i said this listen People, some people agree and other people don't. I, I go, Austin Matthews is a phenomenal player. Top two, three players in this league. But when I was on the ice and I see him getting punched in the face and he's got a grin on his, my, on his face and he's not fighting back, I go, is that the guy that's going to lead, lead me to the promised land and to a Stanley Cup? I don't think so. Now, I'm not saying he's not going to win a Stanley Cup. He'll probably win. I hope he wins a few in this league and I hope he wins one as a Toronto Maple Leaf player. But I think adding those those character players, you know, I saw a, a clip from last night when Toronto was playing or two nights ago against Montreal and Reeves is getting the guys pumped up in the dressing room. That's what he does. That's that. That's a good thing. I think that's this yeah, is exactly yeah, I think you're right. I, I think you're right. Well, that, that's the one thing that Toronto's missed is they've missed grit. Right. Having a Max Domi there. And I think Max, uh, I think Max has learned a lot over this past year. What happened in Chicago? Uh, he led the team in points in Chicago. He uh, he really played some great hockey. Uh, he learned to play on the in, on the interior, right, instead of being right. a perimeter player. And then he played great during the playoffs for Dallas. I think he really took a took a big step on his development, or at least his confidence, where he saw and sees how he needs to play to be successful. And that's with grit, and yeah. that's being that's that's being in in the fray, not on the outside where he's where he's ineffective because right. he's a smaller player. Um, but he is one of those smaller players that can be effective because he is a little tough little bastard. He does have an, uh, have an edge to him. He does have bite. He will fight. He will be edgy. He will push back, which in this day and age, you know, as well as I do, there are a lot of players that won't, won't push yeah. back. Even to, even for a guy like Max Domi, who's five foot nine, five ten, and shows a little bite, he's going to push a lot of these, a lot of these chicken shits away who, who will not. Who yeah. will not bite back. That's so, great. It's and, great to see a Domi, a Domi on the back of a Leafs jersey again, too. Yeah, and you I know? and I think Bertuzzi's going to be great. He's, I mean, he he adds an edge, especially in front like of that in the power play. Front of that in the power play. But I think Ryan Reeves is a big is a big aspect because what Ryan's going to do is he's going to make these guys accountable. He's going to be in that locker room. He will not be afraid to raise his voice and bark. He will not be afraid to make sure that the players that are on the ice know that he's policing, protecting his players, giving his guys like like Marner, like Nylander, like Matthews, a little bit more confidence to go out there and play a little bit more edgy, play with some bite, play a little bit more maybe uh, loosey-goosey. And uh, Reeves is going to give that to him. And I, and for, I, me, for, for me, well, Samson, Sam, Samsonoff and Jones are going to be a huge key, which always is the case goaltending-wise. But 
Well, Toronto's got Toronto's got a shit ton of pressure on them. And by the way, you know all the Toronto Maple Leafs. It's September. All the fans are talking Stanley Cup. We got the banners. We're oh yeah, no, no, no. I talked to my brothers today in Toronto, and they live in Burlington. They've already got the parade route uh, planned. It's, it goes down Young Street, and then it cuts across Bayshore by the ACC. It's uh, it's uh, it's hilarious. I love it. I love the Leafs. They say fans. the same things. They say the same things in October, and then they say the same things in fucking March. In March. I know. Listen, you, suck. But, you guys suck. You know, we've choked again. But you talked about the goaltending. There's a kid that's on that is uh, Joseph Wall, W-O-L-L. And he came in re- in relief of Sam Sonoff last year in the playoffs. He's a St. Louis kid. I wouldn't be surprised. He's he's definitely higher in the depth chart than Martin Jones. It wouldn't surprise me at all if by Christmas time you see this kid take the bull by the horns and he's their number one goalie. He, this kid's a stud. So how much pressure does does uh, Connor McDavid and Drysaddle have in Edmonton? Because obviously everybody's looking for that team to take that next step, and I think they have they have some serious issues on the on the support end uh, until they get a third and fourth line that can be consistent on a on a gamely basis. Uh, I mean, their defense is awesome. Edmonton's defense yeah. is awesome. They're big. They're strong. Their it's good, goaltending but... is very. Their goaltending is average. Their top two lines are very good. But after that, I mean, but there's sure. a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure with Edmonton. You know, you you, you hit the nail on the head, Jer. Like, their, their second, third lines are Holloway, McLeod, Yarnmark, Fogel, Peterson, Peterson and, and Derek Ryan. And I'm sorry, you know, I, I compare that team with with uh, Vegas's third and fourth lines. It just doesn't even compare. There's so much pressure. Wait, wait, you're right about the Vegas's fourth line. Might have been their 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 best line. It was in, unbelievable, in right? Yeah. It was unbelievable. Yeah, that's so, that's how you well, win championships. So much pressure. Yeah. There's so much pressure put on McDavid and Drysaddle, and and they seem equipped to handle it. You know, they've made it to the third round once and the second round a couple times now, and but I don't, I just don't see that team being deep enough. And they're listen, you you're American. I'm Canadian. I'm I'm half American now. I'm a citizen, but. For hockey fans in Canada to have an Edmonton Toronto Stanley Cup Finals would be unbelievable. It'd be unbelievable. It'd be incredible. I will tell you this for, for for all the things for all the things I've been saying. I actually, which we will get to at the end, but uh, my prediction is 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 pro is not probably. I am predicting a, a Toronto Edmonton final. So we'll get to that a little bit later. But we talk about we talk about pressure um, and. Everything that you see everywhere right now, everywhere you go on NHL.com, you go on NHL Network, and it's all, it's all Connor Bedard, Connor Bedard, Connor Bedard, yeah. Connor Bedard. It's the Connor Bedard League now. It's it's almost like we forgot that there's even another Connor in the <laughs> National Hockey League named Connor McDavid, but uh, for for reasons that um, you know he deserves. I mean, he is the highest touted draft pick since Connor McDavid. Um, how much pressure? How much pressure does, does do you think this kid has on him, or does he feel any pressure? Because at his size, at 5'10", 175 pounds, uh, he's got um, he's got he's got a big big hurdle to climb this year. Yeah, he does that. You know what? If if I'm him, he he shouldn't have any pressure. You know, he, he listen. Chicago should not. Last night they were chanting in Chicago, "We want the cup. We want the cup." Listen, the first Holy line. Shit. The first. I, listen, the, I love. I hey, I'm the biggest Chicago Black. Oh, well, I know you are. Right? I know you are. But listen, let's let slow the fuck down. Here. Well, let's well let's and, let's, let's, let's let's make the playoffs first. Let's have well, fun. And, and, and the first forward. line is is Connor Bedard with Taylor Hall and Ryan Donato. And I'm sorry, no no disrespect to Ted Donato's son Ryan, but if he, that's his right winger and t- Taylor Hall, who I like as a player, but I don't know if his hockey IQ is is strong enough to play with a with a Connor Bedard. He just doesn't have the support staff around him. I like the job that uh, the GM did in bringing in Nick Foligno, Corey Perry, those guys that have been around, veterans and so on, to, to show them the ropes and take care of them. But they just don't have the depth yet. They're not strong enough on defense. They've got decent goaltending. But I'm excited, man. I'm excited to, to watch him play because – Everything I've watched on TV and highlights, I'm excited for when he comes to St. Louis and I can take my son down to watch him. Yeah, it, it, it definitely will be fun to watch. You know, if there's ever a time for a smaller player to be successful in the league, it's now. 
uh, because there's no more fighting anymore. There's barely any hitting. You know, exactly. Like, you know, it's you can you can play with you can play with eggs and eggs in your pockets. You know, right now and not get not get them broken. Um, so for for Connor, that's that is a good thing with the new rules. And you know as well as I do as a referee, the new rules of not being able to hook, not be able to touch the hands. It gives a guy like Bedard so much more freedom to be creative you see some yeah. of these moves he's making if i tried to make a move like that back in the 90s i would get my head punched right in you get it punched in and then when you came to the bench somebody on your bench actually might punch you in right yeah. they yeah. actually yeah. make yeah. that yeah. Yeah. going who is this, who is this cocky kid and what he's doing but now that's just the norm you know we see this we see zegris and anaheim and so on it's good for the league listen i loved you know, when I was watch, showing my son Bronson videos of you the other day, I missed that era. But like anything, everything changes, um, and that's just that's the 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 sport that we have now. And the, but at the speed of the game, our game is in a good place. The league's done a good job in clamping down on the rules, letting the stars flourish and show their skills. And yeah, I think it's going to be exciting. I'm I'm pumped to see them. It's a great time for Chicago, especially with everything that they've been through. And, uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's nice. Much. It's nice. To see, it's nice to see the excitement back in that building, even though Correct. they haven't won a game yet. They haven't started that that Chicago feeling excitement is back in the United Center, which I hope I hope that kind of feeds off into the players as they're going out every night. It's going to be a full barn to watch Connor Bedard. And you know what it's like playing in a full barn in Chicago. It's 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 electric. It's energetic. Yeah. You know, oh, that that yeah. an, that anthem's going to go off, and it's going to get everybody going. And I hope those players understand the history of of that, and and play to, you know, to that excitement. And I, I'm going to have to agree with you. I don't I don't think Bedard has the players around him that are going to, that are going to help him be that hundred no. point guy that maybe a lot of people think he's no. going to going to have. And and I listen to all these all these so called. Um, you know, specialists and, and analysts and these guys who are th th that say they know what they're doing, saying, oh, Connor Bedard is already top 10 best players in the league. I mean, why are you fucking saying this about this yeah, kid already? He hasn't, hasn't played a game yet. Give him give him some time to get adjusted because he's going to go through some growing pains, man. He's going to be Absolutely. playing against the other team's top lines. He's going to be playing against the team's top defensemen. He's going to get all the attention on him. And, you know, right now he's doing all this stuff in preseason. He's playing against, he's playing against guys that are, that are trying to make the teams. You know, Listen, it's going to be, a, it's going to be a different story when it's the season. He's gone from junior hockey to now trying to beat Victor Hedman on a one-on-one. -on -one. Like, I'm sorry, things, this is a different ball game up here. And people are saying he could get 40 goals. I go, there's not a chance he's going to get 40 goals. He could get a whack of assists if he had people around him. How many points is he get? How many points is he going to get? What, what do you I think? say 65. I think 65 is reasonable. You know, okay. I just I, just because I don't think they're a very good team. I, I think if he had better players around him, but you know, and yeah, going back, I was on my podcast. I was on my podcast. Um, you know, the the um, with my boys uh, after the whistle this morning with uh, with oh, Andrew, Andrew Peters Peter. and Andrew oh, yeah. Peters and Craig Ravey, two of my favorite guys. With and we Great we guys. do our podcast. Every every Wednesday morning at, at, yeah. at nine o'clock. Every Wednesday morning, these guys are great, so I enjoy doing with them. And they said the same thing. You know, it's, Craig Ravey thinks fifty-five points. You know, sixty points. I was I was around seventy-five. I I kind of closed off at eighty-two because I think he's going to have a big power play year. I think he's going to get a lot of points in the power play. And and Ravey said I was full of shit. I didn't know what I was talking about, yeah. but um, <laughs> you know, only time will tell. I think yeah. he will be a power play specialist. I think that's where he's going to get his most points. And he's going to have every opportunity to play, you know, like a veteran, a lot of the and, and Connor McDavid, pretty much two minutes of every power play. You know, it's not the Chicago fans fault for what happened with the whole beach thing and everything that went on. And so I'm happy for the fans. They, they that that fan base is going to be rejuvenated having a Bedard. But one thing I wanted to mention is and I don't know if you know this and a lot of fans don't know this. Beach's brother, Cody, is actually a ref in the NHL now. And he can't, he got yeah he got brought on I think two years ago he was drafted by the Moose job by uh, the Blues actually a big tough kid kid six five and uh, he's working in the American Hockey League this year and he'll probably he'll get some games up top and so on so shout out to Cody so that, that's that's interesting that you say that so 
so as a referee, I know as a player, starting every year, you, you get, you, you're excited. Everybody's got a clean slate. You want to yeah. get off to a good start. You, you want to get some wins, obviously, as a team. But you also want to get off to a good start as a player. You want to score a goal early. You want to get a point early. You want to make sure that th that always makes a goal scorer or a point guy feel good to put up a couple points. So you have pressure like that. Is there is there pressure for a, for a referee to start the season? Is there and and what is the nervousness? What is the pressure that that comes along with the beginning of a season for a ref? Yeah, you know, there's that's a great question. There's a lot of. I shouldn't say a lot of pressure, but there's pressure for you to get off to a good start. It's it's good to, to I'll give you an example. It was it was eight nine years ago, and I had a you know I've like you we've we haven't always made the best choices, but I took it. I I met up with this Greg. About? What are you talking about? I know. I don't make good choices. But I met up with this Greg Wyshynski in in uh, New York, and I shot took a shot at tequila. Well, it went online. You mean you mean that you mean Craig Wyshynski, the writer? Yeah, Greg, 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 yeah. yeah. What, a, what, a, what, a, what a piece of shit he is, but go ahead. Well, right. So he was, so anyway, I met with him. I took a shot. I went on the internet. League suspends me for a game. I don't work the playoffs that year, uh, which was the first time in like 15 years. So the season starts, and I said to my boss at the time, I said, listen, I said to him that summer, I said, I'll be back. I'm fucking working playoffs this year. I've worked them for 15 years in a row. I, I understand why, because of the – the media and everything that you didn't put me in this year, but I will be back. So the season starts. Hold on, you 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 didn't play because you did a shot. Because the yeah, it's the whole protect <laughs> protect what? protect the shield night before the game. Yeah, you know, I know. Listen, yeah, I, I, how is doing a shot the night before a game going to? I always, if, I always. If, if, if I if I got if I got suspended or didn't play for doing a shot before a game, I wouldn't have had a fucking career. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always wanted to ask Gary Bettman. I always felt like saying, Gary, if it was a glass of wine instead of a tequila shot, would have been okay. But so anyway, they suspend me. So we're in That's the pre so, that is so stupid. <laughs> so we're in we're in Anaheim. It's preseason and Rafi Torres is playing. And as you know, Rafi was yeah, I love Rafi. Great guy, but JR, he fucking hit late all the time. All the it was 1001, 1002, 1003. Puck's gone. So he lays out this defenseman from Anaheim. I can't even remember his name. And he lays him out. The guy's knocked out, stretcher. So I call, I, I'm the only one on the ice that sees it. I call a penalty. I give him a match penalty for uh, attempt injury. They suspended him for 40 Is this games. In Chicago? Right? Is this in Chicago? No, this, no that's, when he, that's when he hit uh, Hosa. That's when Rafi hit Hosa when he was playing for Vancouver. And... And there was no call on that play. And and so anyway, going back to the – so they suspend him for 40 games, and Stefan Cantel, who was the, the uh, player safety guy, calls me up, and he goes – because he knew what happened at the end of the season before. He goes, I'm really glad that was you that got that call. Because then it put me back on the – on in the good graces, whether you agree with it or not, with the league. They were like, okay, Peel's back on his game. He's ready. And sure enough, I came back and I worked that season. So, but funny story. When, Go ahead. Finish up. Funny story that the playoffs with Hosa – Torres knocks Hosa out of the game. Same thing. Stretcher, they're carrying him off the game. I remember. And, and the two refs that were working the game, they don't call a penalty. And Jonathan Taze looks at them and says, you don't have a penalty. They're like, no, we got a clean hit. And Taze goes, he's getting carried off in a fucking stretcher. <laughs> How do you not have a penalty on the play? Well, Hosa was good. Or, I, I listen, again, I, I've seen really good hits that, that cause people to go off on stretchers. Um, it happens. I mean, yeah. a good hit's a good a good hit's a good hit. I'm not saying that Rafi Torres's hit was a good one, but I, I've I've made some mighty mighty good good hockey hits that guys had to had to get carted off and didn't even know where they were for a couple of days. Um, that happens. But is there? Do you think the referees are protected um, by the National Hockey League? Like, why why don't the referees why, why don't the referees do more? Uh, press conferences. Why? Why is it against? Why do they protect the referees so, so uh, strongly? Okay, let me ask you this. I miss three calls in a game. Say I'm in Chicago. I miss three calls. I come out. The reporter in Chicago asked me, "Pilsy, why'd you miss these calls?" I didn't see him. 
I was blocked out. I didn't see it. Is that gonna is that gonna appease the fan base? I I, I get your point. I've been asked that a lot, but the thing is. Wes McCauley's a good communicator. Kelly Sutherland's a good communicator. Yeah, we but have, if you say something as a player, you're going to get suspended. I mean, yeah, we, should I, be able, I, we should be able to say whatever we want about just the same way that people say about us. Right? Yeah. You know? I don't know. I, I, I don't think so. Like, I think it's a slippery slope because some guys, you know, it's like being on social media. You can't be on social media when you're full time, when you're a ref in the National Hockey League. I, I'll let, <laughs> No, trust me. They've all got fake accounts. You better have some thick fucking skin, man. They've all got every one of them has a fake Twitter account under under uh, an alias because they want to know what everyone's saying about them. Okay, yeah. and and I was the same way. I had a fake Twitter account because I want to know what so and so saying about me after the game. And you know, we're, we're people. We're human beings. Like we care about what people say about us. And and. Uh, uh, I've, 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 I have left that in the past. I don't, I, I could give two shits anymore yeah. about what people say and Twitter doesn't bother me whatsoever. I mean, I've have, I, the, the things that have been said to me on Twitter and all that stuff, it, you know, I, it's a chuckle now. I, it's, it's way beyond any, it, I don't get my feelings hurt. I, I laugh at it and I'm like, these people just don't have anything better to do than to try to yell and scream at me. Like, do you not know? Do you not know me at all? I don't give a shit. And by the way, for all you guys that are watching, if you do want to join, uh, come on and ask a question. Uh, click that knock button, uh, then sign up. Get uh, get in that top right corner and and sign in, and then we'll be able to bring you on and uh, have a couple conversations right on air. It's always good because listen, Peelzy. One of the greatest things about No Filter is we we actually because we are live we are able to bring fans on and, and contribute to the show. And, and that brings a whole new different perspective, right? The fans, yeah, no. the fans, of, the fans opinion is, is, is pretty much more important than, than ours because they're the ones that pay the money to go, 100%. To go watch these games. So I want, uh, I wanted, I want, I wanted to ask you, what do you think is going to happen? John Cooper is a friend of mine. He love he, John Cooper. Love, love John Cooper. Love him. He's Coop's the best. So I met Coop, uh, J.R., 18 years ago. I don't know how it was a long time ago. Chaser, Kelly Chase and Brett Hall own the North American League team here in St. Louis. They bring him in to, to, to coach the team. He wins the championship, lives here for a couple of years. Coop's a great guy. I think this might be the most challenging year Coop is going to have coaching. No Vasilevsky for two and a half months. Um, you know, his goalie is Jonas Johansson and Another guy I've never even heard of. Stamkos isn't happy. I saw his interview the other day. His contract's up, and and he was waiting to sign a contract this summer, and and the GM didn't even approach him. So this is going to be a this is a year for for if you're in the Eastern Conference, this is a year to punch Tampa right in the mouth and and get on them early. And that's a team that they could struggle early. I agree. And it's for a lot of reasons. I mean, Tampa has played more hockey than most teams, uh, pretty much every team in the National Hockey League for the last five years. Uh, they are a worn team. There's no question about it. And when you have an unhappy Steven Stamkos, and by the way, he should be unhappy. And there's no reason why De, uh, um, Desjardins has not come up and just, give, just given Steven Stamkos anything he wants. Because you remember Steven Stamkos gave a hometown discount. Big time. And his last deal to make sure that that Steve Eiserman could sign Braden Point, can sign Kucherov, can sign Palak, can sign all these top guys to make that a championship team. And that makes Steven Stamkos one of the best team guys ever. Um, this is his time to make up what he did. Um, you, you, what you said about Vasilevsky, they lost Palat, they lost Kalorn. These are big, big aspects of their team that, are, that make them strong. Uh, it's going to be very, it's going to be stressful, no question, uh, for for the Tampa Bay Lightning this year. And, you know, that's what happens, though, when you win Stanley Cups. You, you find yourself, look at Chicago Blackhawks. I mean, just in seven years ago, they just won their third cup in six years. And right. now they can't even get a sniff. I know. They can't even get a sniff of the playoffs. They just won the first pick overall, which, by the way, changed their their trajectory back in 2005 after they did something other crazy, like trade, make crazy, stupid trades in 1996. So 
Um, <laughs> would that um, be you? <laughs> that would be me, right? So the, Who, the what, was the what was uh, the trade? What was the trade? I was traded for uh, Alexei Zhamnov, Craig Mills, uh, who was a first round pick, plus a first round pick, who ended up um, who ended up being uh, oh, what's his name for Detroit? I'm, I'm drawing a blank. It was a good player too. Um, yeah. But two first round picks, Alexei Zhamnov, who is a dynamite, dynamite He's hockey a good player, player. A good friend, and a good friend. So, but after that, you know that the Hawks went kind of downhill, and by two thousand five, they were the worst team in the did league. That break, fans. Did that break your heart then? It did. It did. It's probably one of the things that I go back on and I say I would change. It was my relationship with uh, with the Words family and with the Hawks at the time. And you know, I've been very public about that. It was probably the hardest thing that I ever had to go through as an athlete is, is to get traded from a city that I love. And I always wonder what my career would have been like if I stayed in Chicago. It would have been a pretty unbelievable thing. But uh, you know, I love the Blackhawks, and you know, I, I took accountability, you know, late in my career for how I treated that relationship. But it still doesn't change the fact that the Blackhawks did go on a different trajectory after that yeah. and ended up getting yeah. the first pick in um, in in um patrick kane uh you know eight years nine years later which is uh, pretty but you know what jr everything happens for a reason because because you, you were a perfect philadelphia flyer right i think so too i you love were, philly oh my god um, right yeah, philly and i philly and i are like two peas in a pod man we fit together like uh i love like i love i loved working in that city it was one of my before so before my release, your last week, you get to pick four, four or five uh, buildings to work your last game in. I was yeah. going to go Montreal, because I love working in Montreal. I was going to go Montreal, Madison Square Garden, Philadelphia, nice. and St. Louis. Because so, nice. I wanted to work my last game at, yeah. at home in St. Louis. And it's funny, this, there was this guy, you know the sign guy behind the net in Philly? Well, of course. He's right? one of my good friends. One of my good so, friends, sign guy. Yeah. So, so we're at Chickie and Pete's one night because I I like to go a lot after the game and have a few beers and and he comes up to me and and because we come out on the ice and he go ref you sock and but you know all those posters that he had <laughs> and and so he comes up he goes hey I'm the sign guy I go hey I, nice to meet you bought him a beer we drank for the next two hours so next night next trip I come into Philly I come on the ice I'm skating around. I come around, he's hold, I swear to God on my kid's chair, he's holding the sign up, he goes, welcome back. So every game after that, it was welcome. I'd give him a fist pump like this, and we'd be in the dressing room, I'd go, watch the sign guy, we'd come out, welcome back. It was no more refuse That's sock. Awesome. It was, it was awesome. Man. You yeah, get to know people. Man. Yeah, you get to know man. the fans. When the fans get to know you, they realize, yep. oh, he's not an asshole. He's just yep. out there doing his job, and, you know. I, I played, I played. I played the game the way Philly fans rooted for the game. Exactly. It was just, it was just a, it was a match made in heaven. I love playing for the Flyers. And, you know, um, it's a couple of things that happened in the off season. What a crazy, crazy story of Mike Babcock. First of oh all, my God. When, Mike, when, when Mike Babcock got hired, I was like, are you shitting me? How in the hell with all of the rumors and all the things that, 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 you know, that you hear about Babcock and some of the things that you've seen of him do, and he gets a job with a team like Columbus who has to have a good year, who has yeah. to have a, who has to yeah. take that next step. Um, I was shocked. Were you shocked when Babcock got that job? Knowing, act- that, with, knowing when you have, you have great, great coaches that are sitting in the weeds waiting to get hired. You know like what? Quenville. I wasn't. I wasn't shocked, and you may might think I'm full of shit, but I honestly you wasn't shocked. I were. I was not. I figured he would because you know what he had done. He had. He'd gone. He had rehabilitated himself. He's working for the University of Saskatchewan. He's doing coaching clinics in Canada. He's doing all the right things. So when I heard he was back, it didn't shock me. Boy, he I, forgot about those. He forgot forgot about those clinics. Right. Really I, quick. Mike Babcock. And I, when I was a ref, I always got along with Mike because, but I didn't know how he treated his players. You know, I didn't know any of that. But then when I heard, and you and I have talked about this when Johan Franson came out and how he basically had a mental breakdown on the bench because of Babcock. And then when Mitch Marner, what he did to Spets, Mitch Marner, but then Jason Spetsa 
is truly one of the most most liked guys in the NHL by all the players. They just love yeah. Spezza. The officials love him. He's just a class act. He's a great guy. He signs with Toronto. What's his babs do the first night? He fucking scratches him. Like with the, I, fa- with, with, with the family with his, yeah, come to yeah, watch him. Right? Scratches him. Just a horseshit move. And then the cherry on the top of Mike Medano is or, or Mike Babcock is what he did to Mike Medano. And and the you most, know Mike one Medano. Of the most, one of the most one of the most disrespectful coaching to player situations. It's unbelievable. I've you ever, even make I've it ever up. Seen. It's unbelievable. So for the listeners out there, Mike Medano had to play one more game in the NHL to reach fifteen hundred games. And Babcock, the last game of the year in Detroit, no, scratched. It was like three games. It was like three well, there games. were three games left, and I think he played one to make it fourteen ninety nine. Then he scratched them the last game, and he missed playing fifteen hundred. And it it was like, but you know what? Like how did how did the players? How does anybody? How does anybody say Mike that this is not cool? Like you can't. But I guess he had that much power with with the organization. And, yeah, but- but it doesn't even matter, matter the organization when you lose your players, right? When you when you have players that don't want to play for you, there is no reason, zero, zero reason that Mike Babcock should sit Mike Medano out for one game and zero. not allow him fifty zero. Oregon. Hall of first ballot Hall of Famer to me, the greatest American player ever born. In, in my opinion, yeah. Mike Medano is the greatest, yeah. and what he's done in the game, Stanley Cup. You know, he's playing Olympic teams. You don't, he's a first class guy all the way. And he's a good guy. Right. He's a great guy. Right. The fact that Mike Babcock disrespected him and wanted to upstage him, upstage him to show Mike Medano who, who's boss. Bullshit. You don't, you don't show people who's boss when they have great milestones to accomplish like that. That was the biggest Bush League move that I've seen in coaching in any sport. Maybe ever. And, I know. And, I, and, and he, I, he, lost, he lost a lot, a but, lot of players' respect. By but you know, who I, you know who I feel sorry for right now? Because it's not his fault? Is His son, Mike Babcock. His son's the same name, Mike Babcock. Well, the Blues hired him as, a, as their skills guy, Okay. And he was at the local rink that my son plays at a week ago. And I heard through one of the coaches that he just wanted to be introduced as Michael. He didn't, it, which sucks. Like he's, he's embarrassed. Like this is, he, his, that's his name, Mike Babcock. And, and he, this is going to follow him for the rest of his life. It's, I feel ter- it's not his fault. Like it's terrible. You know, but again, like what, what does Mike Babcock get? Out of going through his players' phone, he's an idiot on their phone. Yeah, like how how does that how does that win you hockey games? How does that change your relationship with a player? Like, I don't, I don't understand. Is he that big of a narcissist and control freak? And does he want to get? Does is he looking to get something on his players to hold as maybe um, as as you know, a, a power over them. To me, it's it's one of the most most stupidest reasons listen, ever to get fired before he even started. Listen, if Mike Babcock got a second chance or a third chance, whatever you want to call it, with Columbus, the guy you just mentioned a few minutes ago deserves an, another chance, and that's Joel Quenville. And Joel Quenville is not a Mike Babcock. Joel Quenville is loved by every player and and uh uh training st- everybody that as ev- you ask big walt yeah. everybody that's played for this yeah. guy love joel quenville yeah. and we go back to that chicago thing to me that f- fell on the hands of john mcdonough the president of the chicago blackhawks that's the guy he's in charge it's it's some, like he's in charge of the organization joel's coaching the team he's he's in charge of winning hockey games I know Joel Quenville personally, so maybe I'm a little biased, but I don't think I am. He deserves to be back in this game. This is a guy that yeah, would have well, been in might, the Hall of Fame. I, I think, I think he'll get back. He'll get I back. Think, I think this year, you know, the, there's going to be a few coaches on the hot seat. And, and I think, uh, I think that uh, when there's a change made, he'll, you know, he'll, he'll get his shot. So. 
All right. Well, game one is coming up. Um, first games of the season. Uh, ESPN has a great game to start the season, and I'm sure everybody's going to get get all up for this one because it's Chicago versus Pittsburgh, and we're going to get to see Connor Bedard, the new the new stud of the National Hockey League, going against probably one of the best players in the history of the game, and probably most one of the most respected in Sidney Crosby, and also we got to throw in Malk in there. So great opening matchup. You got uh, young awesome. star, old stars. Um, I'm going to be really interested to see how Pittsburgh is this year. I think Sydney is, he has something still to prove uh, in terms of carrying this team to the playoffs. Because what happened last year to this P- Pittsburgh Penguin team at the end of the year might be one of the most oh embarrassing things. God. One of the most embarrassing things that they, has ever happened in this organization. And Sidney Crosby and Malkin and Latang have had to sit all summer yeah. knowing that they lost to Chicago Blackhawks yeah. game 81. And all Columbia. they had to do is win two. All they had to do is win two games. Yeah. They had to beat the Chicago Blackhawks, who were the worst team in the league. Yeah. The Columbus Blue Jackets were the second worst team in the league <laughs> in the last two games of the season. And they lost them both. Right. And there's no question that that irked Sidney Crosby something fierce. And he has a little burr up his ass. And I'm sure he's going to come back. And they made some good signings. They got Lars Eller, which is a great player. I love Lars I really Eller. Like Lars. He's a he's a two way player, penalty killer. One of my favorite guys that left left uh, the 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 Golden Knights in Riley Smith is an amazing awesome. amazing uh-huh. two way player that will get you fifty five points maybe sixty. Nieto is a good player, and then then they got the big guy. They got Eric Carlson, who is like the anchor of a power play. He's the point. He's he's the first guy to get a hundred points since Paul Coffey back in the nineties. Right. He had a career year last year with over 100 points as a defenseman. Um, if he can stay healthy, but you heard a little rumor going on out in Pittsburgh, which probably isn't good to be starting the season. As yeah. Eric Carlson goes. Yeah. You know what? It's uh, I'm with you. I, I agree with you 100%. First of all, I love Sidney Crosby. The, the fucking guy. Not? The, guy's a, not? the guy's a stud. The way he handles himself, the way he would complain every once in a while to me and so on. And then, and then all of a sudden I worked a thousand games years ago and a box shows up in the summertime and it's a signed Jersey from Sid to PLZ, blah, blah, blah. He just, awesome. and he's an awesome guy. And, but Latang, I like I reffed Latang. He's got a big ego, a huge ego, phenomenal player. Carlson's got a big ego and I've heard that talking to somebody in Pittsburgh today that they're already there's they're already not happy because there's only one puck to share there's only so much power play time and I don't think that's gonna I don't think those two are gonna be you know hanging well, it's out an anchor right it's an anchor who's gonna anchor that top side right so you got you got Malkin and Crosby you know on the flank um who anchors that defensive is it Carlson I, I mean is there enough puck to go between Latang and Carlson? Do they put them on separate lines? I think they have to. Put, you got to put them on separate lines. You got to have a, a, a first unit and a second unit. You know what I mean? Like maybe not, but I think well, that's you know, the Sully, way you. Sully's, oh. very, Sully's very smart. He's going to coach the game, right? He's going to hey. coach the game and see. He's one of the smartest coaches, one of the smartest hockey minds that I've known in a long time. He's going to um, know when to keep them on the ice at the same time and whether to move them around and see their attitudes and see how they're getting along on the bench. And, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll coach properly in the situation, but I, I think it's great. I love the fact that these guys are bitching back and forth already about who's going to get more power play time. I'm a, I'm going to, I'm going to love watching this first game oh, against the Hawks in, in Pittsburgh. hundred percent. I agree. And I think it's good. I think this, you know, I'll give, I'll give Dubas a lot of credit. I was not a big fan of his last year in the playoffs when he's in Tampa and he's, He's yelling at the fans, the, the Tampa fans, and he's, I don't know, it kind of seemed junior hockey-ish to me for whatever reason. But I'll give him credit. He went to he went to Pittsburgh, and he's brought on some good people. He brought on one of your old uh, teammates, Doug Wilson, as an advisor, right? Yeah, and, thank goodness. God bless Doug Wilson. Right? Thank goodness he's healthy. Thank goodness he's feeling better. Doug's a great he's guy. in the league. He's exactly. a great hockey mind. He's a great hockey mind. Very well respected. He de- he deserves to be in the league. I'm very, you know, very and, happy that and, he said that. And, yep. and people were like, Car- well, San Jose didn't get anything for Carlson. Mike Greer, you know, what the fuck were you going to get for Carlson? All Mike Greer wanted to do was get rid of $11 million a year and try to get yeah. his 
they can, right? So I yeah. think, uh, you know, I think both sides won, but Dubas has done a good job there. He's, uh, he's in. Yeah, inter- you know what? I think I, uh, Pittsburgh goes back to the playoffs this year. I agree. Uh, they did. They, they did a really good job. I think there's enough in the tank with Malkin. There's enough in the tank with, with Crosby. I think when Gensel gets back, Gensel's one of the most underrated goal scorers in the National Hockey League. You got to love this kid. Love um, them. They are. They are. They're going to be. They're going to be tough to. They're going to be tough to beat. I'm Washington. Does, o, does Ovi make the playoffs? Uh, no, Ovi does not make the playoffs. I think Washington misses the playoffs. Uh, we're, we're, we'll talk. We'll talk next week about Ovi and his chase for, for for the great one two ninety four and Wayne Gretzky. Um, you know, does he have pressure to get there or not? I think that's something that we talk about next week because everybody's going to have eyes on Ovi. There's you know, there's a few people that that are going to have eyes on every single game, whether it's Bedard, whether it's McDavid, yeah. whether it's Matthews, whether it's McKinnon, but Alex Ovechkin for sure. Everybody's going to be seeing how how he's filling the net. What's he 38 right now? He's almost closer to 4, 39. Uh-huh. Um, he needs 70, 74 goals left. Um, I think he gets it, but it's going to be interesting to see if he can keep filling the net at the pace that he has over his career. And if he does at 38, 39, he's, he is and deserves to be the, the greatest goal scorer of all time. So I know, uh, I know we got a later date. You know we got to go soon, but when you talked about Pittsburgh losing to Columbus and, and Chicago that same week, the reason the Florida Panthers got into the playoff was because, <laughs> was because of that. Can yeah, Florida that's right. get, well, that, that's, again, Florida that's another, get to, that's, right? That, well, that's another conversation that we'll have next week when the season starts because Florida, they got into the playoffs because of the Pittsburgh choke and they made, they, they took advantage of that gift, but they played a very interesting and different style than the Florida Panthers are known for. They played the Matthew Kachuk style. And I don't know if they can do that for a full 82 season and still stay healthy and have that same attitude or that same success. So it's going to be really interesting. We'll talk about that next week. We'll talk about the, about the Kachuk factor, which Kachuk, is going to have a better season. Will it be mm-hmm. Matthew Kachuk in Florida, or there will be Brady Kachuk up in Ottawa? Because that Ottawa team is going to be a tough team to beat. Also, they're going to have a really good year. So we'll talk about that next week. But listen, first first one out of the gate. I mean, I'm, yeah. we hit some really good, really good points. Some good stories. You know, we didn't swear too much this this first one, so it was great. I thank you for everybody for joining. I see we had a really good uh, first day of uh, of attendance. But remember, come back on. You got a, we got the knock button. We actually do have a, we do have one knock button. We do have a guest, so I think we should maybe extend this show one more time hey. and bring on and bring on Ronald, so everybody can kind of see how the guest situation yeah, works on No Filter. So I love it. Let's uh, let's bring on Ronald and uh, kind of show people uh, what it's all about. And I'm sure Ronald's going to have some uh, some nice uh, some nice commentary or at least questions that it can add. Whether he got on or off, I don't know whether he's still on. But uh, Ronald, if you're there, click on the button and you'll be able to come on. But it's uh, it's a really good feature that No Filter has is this ability to bring on a guest and allow them to uh, to ask some questions to be part How of. How you show. doing, guys? There we are. We got a good picture of the fan. Ronald, where are you? Ronald? Are you okay? Are you are you being held captive right now? You look like you're in the basement. No, I just uh, I just uh, ran upstairs to try. I watched the beginning. My son called from college, had to get off, jump back on real quick. Just wanted to say good luck. Love you guys. You got Ronald, screwed, you're... Fields. JR, still my favorite American hockey player ever. We were supposed to do the jerseys. The deal fell through. I don't know if you remember that. You were going to sign my jerseys for me. Whoa, whoa. Well, hey, listen, a deal has never fallen through in order to get jersey signed. <laughs> it, it was 100% right my time. fault for whoever's listening. My fault it wasn't J.I.'s. We will, uh, we here's will my get, question we, for both of you, and I want a 100% honest opinion. Yep. But Sabre fans, since almost day one, I missed the first couple of years I was young. I fully believe there's a bias toward the better teams. I've watched it in the 80s when the Bruins got the calls against Buffalo. I watched it in the 90s when the Flyers were scoring goals through the net that got knocked open. Now the last two years, I'm watching it with Tampa Bay, cross-checking Darlene in the head and going after the players, concussing the Sabre players, and it not getting suspended. Do, you, do the refs 
turn the cheek a little bit for a superstar and the top tier players? This is as a great opposed question. to teams like the Buffalo Sabers. Ronald, this is this is a great question. That's it's a great, great question. Every, every single person that watches games wonders whether there's bias, whether it's towards a team or towards a player. That's an awesome, awesome question. And I yeah. can't wait to hear that. So so Ronald, I'm gonna I'm gonna click you off so you can listen to the answer, but having you here is awesome. Uh, I like looking at your fan. Your fan <laughs> looks awesome. Um, I will say you're a great fan, so thanks for coming on. But uh, Next here, time, I'm going to have an incredible setup for you. You're going to be blown away. Okay. okay. Next gonna, week. You, you do that. You must be naked right now because you don't have that on. So I'll take it, I'll take it as that. I love you. I'll, let's get that shirt signed. And I can't wait to hear Peelzy's answer about this because I know he's going to be full of shit because I know that they are buying it. Here he comes. <laughs> See you later, Thank Ronald. You so Thank much, you, guys. Good luck, man. Thank you, buddy. Oh, the funniest line of the night is, you're a great fan. (laughs) (laughs) No, of course there's not. Listen, when he's talking about No, but no, listen, Jared. If someone gets cross-checked in the head, say it's Ovechkin uh, uh, cross-checks, I don't know, Tage Thompson, Buffalo sucked the last couple of years, but they're getting better. And we'll talk about that in a few weeks because I'm excited about Buffalo. Me too. The refs have to call it. The refs are going to call it. I don't think hockey ops says, well, Buffalo's not very good. We're, we shouldn't suspend the other player because they, they got a good team and Buffalo's not very good. I, I disagree with that. Listen, is there, I would be full of shit if I said, did, did I give Sid Crosby some breaks over the years? Did I give Alexander Ovechkin? Did I give the superstars? Absolutely. Because guess what? That's what the 18,000 fans are there to see. They're there to see him, not some fourth-line plugger, okay? But not blatant calls, not match penalties, not you know high sticks, cross-checks, stuff like that. So it's a good question. I, I get it. I, I get the frustration. I get the frustration. So hey, that Ronald, was awesome. there's, you, you know how many times I sat in games and be like, Jesus Christ, how much you have on this game tonight, Peelzy? How many do you have on this game tonight, Bill McCreary? <laughs> Jesus Christ, Stewie. Like, who's who's – who are you who are you meeting at Starbucks with an envelope in the first? Like, <laughs> ah, it was constant. So what a great question! What a great question! Yeah, but, no, that was right, great. Cozy. Oh, we're gonna put a wrap on uh, hey, pal. stripes. Number one show of of the year. I'm excited that we started off with a bang. Thank you for everybody for joining, and uh, make sure you remember pass it on to all your friends. It is nofilter.net. Snipes and stripes every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. 7 p.m. Eastern time. It's going to be a lot of fun. Like I said, we're going to be totally honest. We're going to uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. I hope you guys join us for the rest we're, of the time. Peel, great job. Great we're just, job. We'll see you we're guys just next scratching week. the surface, buddy. We're just scratching the surface.